For decades, Palermo has been synonymous with organized crime, corruption, violence. Today, the capital of Sicily is the symbol of rebirth, thanks to an extraordinary process that involved political and civil leaders, members of the church, the local media, and the law enforcement community. This is a story that teaches some very interesting lessons on how civil society can react with success to violence and intimidation and improve the quality of life of the people in the region. In Sicily, organized crime is referred to as Cosa Nostra, more commonly known throughout the world as Mafia. During the 20th century, Mafia became a structured organization that gained more and more power year after year, leveraging a system based on corruption and fear. Mafia was directly involved in businesses such as construction, generating enormous amounts of money while covering the city with concrete. Corruption was the rule amongst local politicians. In such a way that nearly nothing, even the most simple action, could be obtained without paying bribes. During the 70s and 80s, the Mafia escalated, turning the region into the international crossroads for drug trafficking. The organization deeply infiltrated the political institutions, placing their friends in all of the highest political positions, including mayor of Palermo and other towns. But it didn't stop with politicians. Friends and supporters of the Mafia were in all sectors of civil society, including the media, entrepreneurs, even the church. It wasn't unusual for criminal bosses to celebrate their weddings or baptize their children in the main churches of Palermo, with ceremonies that involved the higher level of the local Catholic hierarchy. All this without any attack or coverage in the local media. In those years, thousands were killed on the streets of Palermo. Many more were threatened, blackmailed, all this without any real reaction from the political and civil leaders. Fueling resignation and distrust among citizens towards the rule of law and in general its institutions. But during the 80s, a new movement started to make its first steps. It involved young lawyers, politicians, even priests that organized public meetings during which they spoke out against this system of illegality, calling for the need for a new culture, the culture of lawfulness. Some priests started dedicating their social work in their neighborhoods to explaining to citizens that there was an alternative to fear and submission, receiving support also from the Cardinal of Palermo. This group started challenging the local media, asking editors to play a direct role in the fight against illegality, exposing corrupt politicians and bureaucrats to the judgment of their readers. It was a strong request if you consider that for decades the media didn't even print the word mafia. Gaetano Badalamenti non è mafioso. Io ritengo che Gaetano Badalamenti non sia un mafioso. Che cos'è un industriale? The relationship between publishers and local politicians was extremely strong. Many years, any journalist that tried to denounce the situation either left the city or changed their position. But the pressure of this civic movement gave strength to the most courageous journalists and editors. They finally started to find space for stories on the role of organized crime in the local economy, in politics, in the everyday life of Palermo. Under this pressure, Italian politicians in Rome were finally obliged to take some action, allowing prosecutors and law enforcement to fight back against the Mafia. 
the reaction of the Mafia was brutal. On May the 23rd, 1992, a bomb killed Judge Giovanni Falcone, along with his wife and three bodyguards. But the murder of one of the symbols of the struggle for the rule of law generated the opposite reaction than the Mafia expected. Instead of fear, the citizens of Palermo embraced courage. They supported the leaders of the movement, now known as anti-Mafia, with marches, vigils, and human chains. The local and national media dedicated constant coverage to this struggle, creating day after day even more support for the fight against illegality. Within a few weeks, the Mafia struck again, trying to stop this process of rebirth and hope. On July the 19th, a car bomb killed Judge Paolo Borsellino, another magistrate and symbol of the fight for a new society free from crime and corruption, together with his five bodyguards. Public outrage after this attack was even greater. All the centers of moral authority finally came together to fight this battle for freedom and democracy. <laughs> Among the strongest voices to speak against illegality was the church. Palermo è il teatro di un nuovo efferato delitto mafioso. The voice of the Cardinal of Palermo resounded every Sunday against crime and corruption, followed by Pope John Paul II. He decided to personally come to Sicily to say that anyone who is a member of organized crime was out of the family of God. And this message was reinforced by priests at the local level. Under pressure from Sicilian and Italian citizens, the national parliament passed special laws, including the seizure of mafia-owned properties and the introduction of a tough prison regime for members of the organization. New witness protection programs were also created for members of the mafia who changed sides and decided to collaborate with the state. This helped investigators capture high-profile mafia leaders who had been on the run for decades. The national and local media began an incessant campaign to support a new culture of lawfulness. In November 1993, the citizens of Palermo elected mayor of their city, Leo Luca Orlando, one of the leaders of the anti-mafia movement. Orlando had been working for years to build a culture of lawfulness in Sicily. Finally, this culture was the model running the city administration. Hundreds of programs were introduced to promote this culture in the everyday life of the citizens of Palermo. Among them, the schools adopt a monument project that involved all primary and secondary school students. The project aimed and achieved to explain to the youngsters that all areas of the city were the property and under the control of the citizens and not of local criminals, even in the poorest neighborhoods. During the past 40 years, entire areas of the city have been seriously neglected by the local administration due to corruption and carelessness. The children were mobilized in their first task of cleaning the buildings. Their appeals, which were supported by the local press, convinced the owners of the buildings, both private and public, to restore the adopted monuments and reopen them to the public. Starting from the 1996 school year, the Giornale di Sicilia, the leading daily newspaper of Sicily, introduced the Cronaca in Classe project. Every day, the paper dedicated a full page to the schoolchildren, who could submit articles and letters about the main issues in their city. 
paper was then handed out free in schools. The mayor personally answered all articles and letters written by the children. This project first encouraged civic debate amongst youngsters and their families, and then it had an extremely positive influence on the whole community, showing that relations with the city administration could be transparent and direct, without the need of corruption and special favours. This also had a very positive effect on the success of the newspaper. Daily sales increased, some of the children became regular readers, and others started to think of careers in writing and journalism. The city administration also put into action a vast urban redevelopment program in an effort to bring back to legality portions of Palermo that were under the control of the Mafia. In the centre of the town was one of the most terrible wounds inflicted by decades of bad administrations, the wonderful opera house Teatro Massimo. It had been closed for 23 years of renovation work, useful only for corrupt politicians and their criminal friends to steal public money. In 1995, after only one year of real renovation work, the theatre was reopened and returned to the people of Palermo. They celebrated this event as the symbol of a new era for their city. A multifunctional structure to host seminars, exhibitions and shows called the Ziza Cultural Centre was opened in a high crime working class area of the city, driving out drug dealers and their clients and bringing families instead. This centre even hosted the United Nations International Conference Against Crime and Corruption. Finally, in the heart of the poorest part of the old city, the wonderful ancient church of Santa Maria de los Pazimo was restored. It was reopened after over 300 years of decay. This was the starting point for the regeneration of the whole area, another step in the direction of legality and freedom for the entire city. This extraordinary period came to be known throughout Italy and Europe as the Palermo Renaissance, a process where all actors played a crucial role. Politicians, law enforcement, civil servants, the church, simple citizens and the media. The latter was even more important because it gave the spotlight to all the others. Some of the results achieved during the years between 1993 till 2000 are incredible. Among them, the yearly murder rate in Palermo passed from 240 in 1984 to 3 in 2000. For decades, every time a crime was committed in Palermo, law enforcement officials would struggle to find any witness willing to testify, even when the crime happened in crowded locations. Today, this doesn't happen anymore. In 1992, the economy of the city was dropping. Tourists were avoiding Sicily, as it was considered to be one of the most dangerous destinations in Europe. Since 1993, there has been a radical change. The number of tourists has increased, particularly that of foreign visitors, which grew by 87%. Heroes that gave their life during this struggle inspired tens of movies, TV series, books, even pop songs. Some had enormous success not only in Sicily but in the entire country, demonstrating that the fight for legality moves not only the conscience but also the emotions of millions of honest citizens in Italy as well as around the world. <laughs> Organised crime is not defeated in Sicily. Corruption still takes place and a long road must be followed before this plague is finally eradicated. However, the story of the last 15 years in Palermo shows that achieving results in this fight is not utopia, even in situations that seem doomed. It provides concrete hope to anyone that believes that every citizen in any city of the world has the right to live in a city free from violence, corruption and intimidation.